Well, the Economic Survey has recommended that the budget should be pragmatic and not aim for extreme fiscal targets. It has also signaled that there are pressures that have to be addressed, such as oil prices, in a pre-election year. Here's more. Among the obstacles to growth, the Economic Survey finds raising investment more significant than raising saving. It also points out that direct tax collections by states are significantly lower than those by counterparts in other federal countries. We see now that there is a robust and broad-based revival. I mean, several indicators of activity. We've shown manufacturing growth, GVA growth, even investment, exports, net private transfers, credit, they've all started to pick up. I mean, the direction is very good. The level is still below potential, should keep that in mind. But in terms of directionally, the economy seems to be picking up quite nicely, quite robustly, and, and, and that's uh, what's happening now. Another key concern, according to the economic survey, is the constant surge in the oil prices. In this regard, it says the first three quarters of 2017-18 oil prices have been 16% greater in dollar terms than in the previous year. In this regard, it calls for vigilance in the coming year if high oil prices persist or stock prices correct sharply. If oil prices remain at current levels, I think you know, there will be challenges. We know rule of thumb, every $10 increase in the price of oil, GDP growth comes down by about 0.2 to 0.3%. The current account deficit will deteriorate by about, again, 0.4 percentage points of GDP, $10 billion. Inflation will be higher also by about 0.2, 0.3%. So I think we need to watch oil prices very carefully. The Economic Survey 2018 highlights agriculture, education and employment as the focus areas in the medium term. On agriculture, it says that raising farm productivity while strengthening agricultural resilience is a priority area. It pegs agriculture growth in financial year 2018 at 2.1%, while the industry growth for financial year 18 likely to be 4.4%. I think that in some ways, you know, my own view is that the government doesn't have to do anything new and radical, uh, etc. Just, you know, finishing what it has started already would be, I think, a very ambitious and a very fantastic agenda to complete. Supporting agriculture because we know there are stresses in the agricultural sector, which are described in the economic survey. Stabilize the GST. I think that you know, we need to stabilize GST because uh, export refunds, compliance, revenue will still have to be, you know, achieve an equilibrium. On the employment front, the service says that finding good jobs for the young and the increasing workforce, especially for women, is a huge challenge. On education, it says the priority has to be to create an educated and healthy labor force. One of the new things we say in this, which I don't think has been pointed out enough, is that we know that the sex ratio in India is highly skewed. You know, if you go to Punjab, Haryana, you'll see it. Uh, but there is a different and maybe deeper phenomenon of sun preference, which we call sun meta preference. And you can get at that not by looking at the sex ratio at birth, but by looking at the sex ratio of the last child. Is the last child more male than female? And what you find is that in India, it's very striking. You look at the difference between the top two charts. That's the sex ratio. If it's the last child, skewed towards males. If it's not the last child, more females. So it's really quite striking. And that's not true of a country like Indonesia and many, many other countries. According to the survey, policy recipes for the coming year will include a huge support to the agricultural sector, stabilizing GST, privatizing Air India and creating an ecosystem for the new insolvency and bankruptcy process to resolve the bad loan problem in the sector. The economic survey says that the government has given utmost priority to social infrastructure like education and health to ensure inclusive and sustainable growth. Even the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan has contributed greatly in improvement of health indicators in rural India. However, child and maternal malnutrition continue to be the most challenging risk factors. Reporting from Delhi, with Kanu person Vijay Singh, I'm Kriti Mishra for Rajya Sabha Television.